I have long wanted to make a video about Spongebob. Um, if you've watched my videos for any amount of time, you're probably privy to the fact that I really like Spongebob. Uh, it was my favorite TV show, bar none, when I was a kid. And uh, while I've stopped following it and haven't watched a new episode in like a good six or seven years, because as is sort of the general consensus, I think that the post-movie episodes are not nearly as good as the first three seasons. Um, I still consider myself a pretty enthusiastic and unabashed Spongebob fan. I mean, I own a bunch of the DVDs. Uh, I've seen the first three seasons episodes hundreds, literally hundreds of times each. Um, and honestly, I've seen seasons like four through six a good few times, too. Um, Battle for Bikini Bottom is legitimately one of my favorite, like, top five favorite video games ever. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, and when I was a kid, it was even more. I memorized entire episodes and performed them for my friends at recess when I was in elementary school. Um... I mean, like, this is the show that got me into, like, storytelling and into cartoons. At one point, I wanted to be an animator. I would still love to be an animator. I suck at drawing. I figured that out when I was a kid, but one day maybe I would want to do that because, uh, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that got me interested in making stuff creatively in the first place at all. The show also influenced my sense of humor quite a bit, and I, I think really informed a lot of my taste in content in general. Um, and I think that's true for, like, an entire generation of people. I'm, I mean, I'm not at all the first person to observe that Spongebob seems to be, more than any other TV show of its type, really, like, prime meme material. And... You know, while memes are silly and get old fast, I think it's notable that everyone seems to have a very deep familiarity with this show. I mean, this is like the root of why nostalgia is so prevalent and popular in the internet era. It's fun to find out that your big childhood thing was a lot of other people's childhood things. Which, I mean, you would think we would know, because before the internet, we were actually speaking to people face-to-face, -face and, I, like, I told them that I liked Sponge- like, they knew. But I feel like the legacy of Spongebob goes deeper than just the fact that it's very popular. Um, you know, I've wanted to make some sort of video essay or something about Spongebob. Um, and, but I, I've been less and less motivated to do it, because there's been a recent explosion of white dudes making long-winded video essay love letters to Spongebob, which is perfectly fine. Uh, I, I just don't know if I want to be explicitly riding that wave, that's all. I've thought for a long time about making a video explaining why I think that the pre-movie episodes are so much better than the ones after the movie, because for all the video essays I've seen on that topic, um, not many of them have completely broached it for me, have really, like, clinched it, although some have made very good points. And I will be sort of making that video in this video, uh, but the real reason I'm making this video, as you probably immediately guessed when you clicked on it, uh, is because of the, the recent passing of Steven Hillenburg. So yeah, for those that don't know, uh, Steven Hillenburg was the creator of Spongebob, and last year he was diagnosed with ALS, uh, a very aggressive degenerative disease that causes the death of neurons that control voluntary muscles. Um, there's no cure, even though everybody dumped ice water on their heads, including me. Um, and it sounds like one of the absolute most terrible ways to die, by far. Um, and Hillenburg did die from the disease this past Monday, and he was 57. There have been plenty of celebrity deaths in the last several years that made me really sad. Robin Williams was one, Anthony Bourdain, David Bowie, Stan Lee. Um, but Hillenburg, from a creative standpoint, was one of my biggest influences. Um, you know, when I think of not only the kind of content I want to make, 
but the approach to creativity I want to take and the way that I would want to conduct myself as a public figure who makes creative work, I almost always think of Steven Hillenburg and the way he operated the studio on Spongebob and the way that he mined his real-life passions and perspective to make a universal and accessible world of characters and the way that he responded to controversy and managed to be down to earth while staying private and not wanting the lavish lifestyle of a celebrity. I mean, the dude created one of the most lucrative media franchises of our time. Like, he could have been Scrooge McDuck in it since like 2005, but he just stayed at home in California with his son, played guitar with him while he played drums, they go surfing together and he liked to draw. Just a cool guy. But yeah, so in those ways he's really been one of my biggest influences and up to this point, I think the reason that this is particularly draining is that up to this point, um, all of my dead influences, all of the dead people, like the people who are dead now, that influenced who I am and influenced what kind of stuff I want to make, um, they were already dead after the influence, or before the influence had come to me. Um, this is the first time that an influence of mine is dying, like that I'm there for it, after having been influenced. Um, and it sucks, it just, it's shitty, because it's not even that, you know, he hasn't been deeply involved with the show for like over a decade, um, but just to know that that presence isn't there in the world anymore in in that way um and and that like someone that you admire doesn't get to stay on the earth a little longer um you know it's not just about like I want him to make more content for me it's just like I you know I just feel like he deserved a good long life so it sucks I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the the creation of SpongeBob and Hillenburg's life for those that don't know it, because I, I think his story has always been interesting to me. So Hillenburg was originally a marine biology teacher. Uh, he was teaching at the Orange County Marine Institute during the 80s. Um, he had an interest in art as a kid while teaching, uh, and he drew a comic book called The Intertidal Zone. Uh, which was an educational comic about the different creatures that appear in tide pools, including a sea sponge named Bob. He wasn't a uh, square like a kitchen sponge like SpongeBob is. He was a little, little ball, little moldy ball thing, like a real sea sponge. Um, and he would present that comic book while he was instructing his uh, students. Um, then in the 90s, he got a job as a writer on the Nickelodeon show Rocco's Modern Life. Uh, where he met many people who would later be cast and crew members on Spongebob. Uh, he got onto Rocco's Modern Life because of his... He went back to school to get a master's degree in animation at CalArts. And um, he, uh, for his thesis film, he made a short film, which I've seen, which is very good, called Wormholes. Then he pitched Spongebob to Nickelodeon in the mid-90s after transforming some concepts and characters from the intertidal zone into the characters and style of Spongebob. I used to have a book. There, I had a book that had a bunch of Spongebob concept art in it, and I don't have it anymore, and I'm, I might buy the book again on Amazon or something, because it's really, really cool seeing all of the concept art, and I wish that I could show it. Then the show aired in 1999 after the Kids' Choice Awards, and in its second and third season, it became Nickelodeon's most successful show by far. It got antagonized by the Catholic League, which is a pretty way, pretty good way to make me think you're cool. Um, in 2004, uh, Steve directed and co-wrote the SpongeBob movie, which he intended to be the end of the series, uh, but Nickelodeon wanted more episodes. Uh, so that's when he resigned as showrunner and gave the spot to Paul Tibbet. Um, though he apparently he did later return in some of these like even more newer seasons. Uh, as an executive producer and a story supervisor, so, um, and by the accounts, pretty much everyone I've seen online and, and in interviews and everything who's worked with Hillenburg, he's a creative and genuinely sweet guy who's just got a dry sense of humor and likes the ocean 
and loves to draw. I love uh, hearing, um, in one of the featurettes of the SpongeBob movie, he talks about his the way he was influenced by uh, Jacques Cousteau's uh, documentary films about about the ocean and going underwater. Uh, and that, I mean, that influence is seen quite obviously in the show. The French narrator is based on Jacques Cousteau. That, uh, that gets to, to another point. And I, I said earlier that I would get into why I think the older seasons are better than the newer seasons. And I'm, I'm gonna, what I just said goes into why I, why I think that right now. I don't think that it's true, or I don't think it's entirely a good argument that the reason that the good seasons are the good seasons the old seasons are better than the newer seasons is because of the change in writers yes several writers left along with hillenberg but some of the most widely despised newer episodes um have been co-written by veteran writers on the show who have written some of people's absolute favorite episodes um but i do think that the feeling of Steve Hillenberg's absence as showrunner is palpable and because it's almost like there's part of his soul in the first three seasons you can really feel his looking over every even if he didn't write many of the episodes himself he was involved at every decision or with every decision and you know you can I you can feel that influence over the first three seasons much more so than the other ones and the movie as well and I think that gets to the main point of everything with SpongeBob I think it's why it remains so popular and widely liked I think it's why I love it so much and I think it's why Hillenberg elevated the show at the beginning and really proved himself to be special the show is at its core because it comes from Hillenberg is a positive thing uh, there's dark humor, and characters are sometimes mean to each other and greedy, but at least in the older episodes, it never feels mean-spirited, and Spongebob himself is just a beacon of positivity. And the characters care about each other. Um, at the very least, Spongebob cares about everybody. Um, and while he is naive and invasive in the old episodes, that care is never construed as a bad thing. Um, and it, and it's never for any, any weird or bad malicious, uh, motivation whenever he's fucking with someone. <laughs> I mean, so many of the later episodes just fall back on, like, gross-out humor and dumb or disturbing facial expressions for the sake of it is what I've seen from a lot of the new episodes, and characters are just being mean-spirited and overly cruel or like unfathomably stupid even by this show's standards. Spongebob is not so much admiringly if overbearingly positive as much as he is just obnoxious and a crybaby and generally imperceptive to the world around him in the newer episodes. Like the original Spongebob, I don't know if anyone remembers this, but in the old episodes Spongebob is actually kind of a competent adult in a lot of ways. Uh, that was That's one of the best parts about his dynamic with Patrick. It's not just that they're friends and he Patrick is particularly dumb, fat, and lazy, but, like, Spongebob is a smart person. Like, he's good at shit, and he isn't a dumbass and can have a normal adult life. You know, I mean, there's the whole episode, I'm with Stupid, where Spongebob has to act like a dumbass so that Patrick doesn't look like one, and, like, he has to just not at all be a functioning adult, which... The reason that that episode is funny is because Spongebob normally is a functioning adult. Just with a childlike sense of positivity and, like, giving everyone the benefit of the doubt. And, I mean, this is deliberate. Uh, Hillenberg has said that he modeled Spongebob after the man-child physical comedians like Charlie Chaplin and Pee Wee Herman. Like, those guys all have houses and sometimes jobs and even social lives. And, you know, they may be clumsy or silly, but they generally know what they're doing, as does Spongebob. And in the new episodes, he acts like a literal toddler, and not only is that not as funny, it's also harder to identify with if you're older than a toddler, if, you know, his motivations and his attitude are, you know, like a three-year-old instead of like a childish adult. That's a different thing. And it was a thing that the older seasons really got, because I think 
there's, I mean, by his own admission and by the estimation of people who have worked with him, there is a lot of Steve in the character of SpongeBob. He himself being a positive and caring, but a little bit neurotic and nerdy guy. And, you know, that was why SpongeBob was funny. It wasn't because of the weird facial expressions or the crazy humor, although, I mean, those are funny. Um, and it means because he's a likable guy like that unwavering positivity and the way that it plays with the other characters is what kept spongebob in the older seasons fresh and likable even when he is crying or screaming or being childish or being overbearing uh you know the comedy is fueled more by character dynamics than mere slapstick most of the time and in my opinion like both in quality of animation as well as in writing and storyboarding, the earlier episodes of SpongeBob for me fit right up there with like Looney Tunes and Tom and Jerry in terms of being like fine-tuned, smart cartoon making. And that's what I miss about it, and I think because those are the influences of Hillenburg, not to say even that they're not the influences of the people who work on the show now, it's just that you could really feel his presence in those earlier episodes they really felt like because it was his specific vision but in such a great collaborative environment making it um but it still felt like his and i just don't get that feeling with the newer uh episodes they don't uh they you know that absence is is palpable I'm, I think I'm done. I'm sorry that this video doesn't really have, like, a big concluding point or anything. I'm mostly just talking about why I think Steve Hillenburg was a good guy, why I think SpongeBob's a good show. Um, it, it'll always have a, a place in my heart, uh, and Hillenburg taught a lot of people, I think, that a kid's show doesn't have to be dumb, and while it's sad how short his life was, I mean, like, his little weird idea ended up becoming one of the most widely loved pop culture icons of all time. So, I mean, he's leaving behind a really positive and impressive legacy. Um, and lots of great artists and voice actors have gained prominence from this show, and so I'm sure that the influence and the cultural relevance of the show will continue to be observed. Um, so Steven Hillenburg, thank you. Uh, you, you made a show that's very special to me. Um, and thank you to you guys for watching me ramble about this cartoon for 20 minutes. Uh, I'll see you next time for more normal video stuff.